All right, so let's talk about what website hosting is. Website hosting is basically a service that's provided by a company which allows you to upload web pages to the internet. All right, so basically they give you this, this space where you can log in, you can uh, transfer files, HTML files or whatever, uh, to your server and uh, you can connect, obviously you will connect your domain to your web hosting uh, through name servers, which we went over in the last chapter. All right, so you get a web server, and um, there's a, there's different types of hosting. All right, so there's shared hosting, dedicated servers, virtual private servers, and reseller hosting. So we're going to go through all those, but that's basically what web hosting is: just a place on the internet for you that you purchase, that you can basically do what you want with. So all web hosting accounts are different. They vary in uh, disk space, bandwidth, um, domains, um, the number of domains. There's a lot of different things that vary, but there are some common features with all hosting accounts. All right, so all hosting accounts have some kind of control panel. All right, so cPanel is actually the most common and, in my opinion, the best uh, control panel that's available. Uh, email accounts and forwarders. All right, so when you purchase hosting, you can typically uh, set up your own email accounts through the through the control panel. Uh, databases. Um, a lot of shared hosting accounts come with uh, MySQL databases, where you can create your own and you can manage them uh, through the control panel. FTP accounts. FTP is File Transfer Protocol. Basically, uh, you download a client like FileZilla. Uh, and you log in with your FTP credentials and then you can just transfer files back and forth from your website. Domain control, all right, so when you have cPanel or some other control panel, you'll have a section where you can add subdomains, you can add add-on domains, uh, and all that. Security features, obviously, is a, is a big deal. Um, they do vary. Hosting accounts do vary um, with security features. But generally, uh, you want you want a, a provider that's going to take regular backups, um, scans for viruses and malware, things like that. Uh, most hosting, especially shared hosting accounts, gives you um, uh, a suite of open source app web applications like WordPress, Joomla, um, maybe shopping carts, and so forth. And they usually give you a way to install those uh, pretty easily. Site builders, a lot of hosting accounts will also offer website builder programs. And analytics, um, there's Ostats, Webalizer, um, many of the shared hosting accounts come with some kind of analytical tool to see um, who's coming to your website. So now let's talk about the different types of web hosting. The first is going to be shared web hosting. And this is the type of hosting that we're going to focus on in this in this series. Uh, basically it's the cheapest type of hosting. Uh, it's the most popular um, and those two go hand in hand. Um, you, what, what it is basically is there's one server and there's many different accounts on that server. One account cannot communicate with the other. They're, they're, um, you know, they have their own space um, and obviously that's why it's a lot cheaper. You have something like dedicated hosting, and there's a, a a whole server that's dedicated to you. Okay, there's not there's not smaller accounts that they're they're handing out. Uh, you actually have the server, so that's why it's so much more expensive. Um, it's used shared hosting is used for small to small medium websites with small to small medium traffic. Okay. Um, a lot of companies will say unlimited web, unlimited disk space and unlimited bandwidth, but you have to be very careful with that because a lot of the time, most of the time, there's um, some fine print where, uh, yeah, you have all the space in the world, but your CPU load can't go past this. All right, so they limit you in other ways usually. So be careful with the unlimited. I mean, if that doesn't make a, a, a company bad at all if they say unlimited. Um, it's just you need to read the fine print. Uh, in prepackaged software, okay, so most shared hosting companies um, or accounts come with uh, things like PHP, 
uh, maybe uh, open source software like that we're going to be dealing with. Um, I know HostGator offers quick install which gives us about 50 different programs that we can install in about two clicks. So that's another thing you want to look for uh, when you're purchasing web hosting. Alright, so dedicated servers, uh, as I said, are much more expensive than shared hosting and that's because you get a whole server. Um, you can get um, you can pay different prices depending on packages uh, and they all vary in hard drive space, memory, and CPU. Uh, and dedicated servers are used for large websites with a lot of traffic. All right, so I would not suggest buying a dedicated server account if this is your first website. Uh, for one thing, it, most of the time you have to manage it. All right, you have to install and uninstall all the software. Um, a lot of it is command line stuff, so do not, I mean, I would just really recommend uh, starting with a shared hosting account because it's easy enough to transfer if you want to upgrade later. And with dedicated servers, you have access to the mainframe, to the main controls, so you can pretty much do whatever you want. All right, reseller accounts are kind of like dedicated servers, but you don't get as much power. Um, and you're able to have access to the main controls to where you can create multiple shared hosting accounts and then you can sell those. You can sell shared hosting through a reseller. Um, you'll get allocated a certain amount of space. Obviously the more space the more you pay uh, and then you can basically just uh, you can hand them out. You can, you can give away free hosting, you can sell it, whatever you want. Um, you can set the, the features as well. You could say, well, this package has five email accounts, this one has 20, uh, this one ha allows one FTP account. So you can single out the different features and, um, you know, create your own packages. And HostGator is, has really good reseller hosting. Uh, I've actually used it for about four years now, and I've had no issues, no, no problems. VPS web hosting is similar to dedicated to a dedicated server in that um, you you have access to the main controls. You can resell from a VPS if you want, um, or you could just use it as your own server. But you can create multiple shared accounts on with a VPS. Basically, it's one server. It's a, it's a physical machine that has a lot of different virtual machines inside of it. All right, and you typically get more um, resources than you would with shared hosting. All right, so it's um, it's a little more expensive than than shared hosting. Uh, usually used for medium-sized websites with a good amount of traffic. All right, so we've taken taken a look at these different types of hosting. Now now we can see uh, the pricing for each. All right, so shared hosting, you can actually get a shared hosting account for even less than $6 per month. So it's it's very cheap. And the most that, well, personally, that I would pay for a shared host account is $25. Um, and that seems to be the average in between, somewhere in between there. Reseller accounts, again, vary, uh, but they're typically between $25 and $150 per month. Same thing with VPS accounts, uh, and this is just from my own research, so uh, obviously you want to do your own shopping when you're purchasing uh, web hosting. Dedicated servers are of course the most expensive, uh, usually between 99 and 400, but there are servers out there that are in the thousands. And as I said, all vary in price and features. So how do you control your hosting account? Every hosting account has some kind of control panel. All right, so cPanel is the most common. That's what we're gonna use with HostGator. That's what I would suggest. Um, I don't like using anything else because they're just confusing, um, especially companies that have their own custom control panel. It can be very difficult to maneuver and, and get what you want. So cPanel, definitely recommended. Um, you can manage your website files, your your domain emails, your FTP accounts, databases, and your domain names. And we'll, of course, we're going to log into cPanel and we'll take a look around. 
Uh, for file management, you basically have a few different choices. FTP is probably the easiest and fastest. Uh, you can log in with something like FileZilla and you can just drag and drop files from your desktop. File manager, uh, most hosting packages come with a file manager, but typically it's slow. You have to do it through the browser uh, and it can be just a real pain, especially if you want to download multiple files. And then SSH um, is basically logging in through a command line and, and doing things that way. And if you know how to do that, you probably don't need to watch this video because it it's, can be kind of difficult. All right, so that's basically what web hosting is. Again, just a, a place to put your, your website. Uh, and there's different types. And there's more types than the ones I've mentioned. Uh, but those four are the main, the main types that you're going to see.